Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at a Microsoft Word box. That is a computer that just runs Microsoft Word because it can't do anything else. Except that we're not because this is a sleeper build. This is one of these uh, many pre-builds that I like to pick up, take a look at, sell off eventually. Hopefully somebody buys it. But this thing features a GTX 960 and that's because it's the only sort of short card that I could find. Though if you have other short cards, you could fit them into a similar build here. Whether that be a 1063 gigabyte card, uh, maybe one of the newer EVGA uh, RTX or even uh, GTX 1660 cards that are sort of short, any short PCB card is gonna fit in here just fine and that's a limitation with how uh, the motherboard is laid out in general. I can't really do much about that, but this is a really nice system. It also features a Xeon 1230V2, which is an Ivy Bridge Xeon, has four cores, eight threads on it. It's gonna perform very similarly to an i7-3770. Its clocks are a little bit lower than the i7's clocks are, but it's gonna perform very similar to that and the Xeons are quite a bit cheaper right now, actually. You can find them for like 65 bucks on eBay, whereas those i7s are more like uh, 90 to $100. So if you're looking to upgrade an Ivy Bridge system, the Xeon may actually be the way to go. So let's go ahead, take a closer look at the specs, take a look inside of this thing, see some of the limitations of this particular pre-built, and uh, then we're gonna hop into Overwatch and uh, game a little bit and show you just what this extremely budget solution can actually get you. So I sort of already introduced this PC a little bit, but to give you a little bit more of an idea of exactly what's under the hood, we have the Xeon 1230V2, that's four cores, eight threads. I think the cap out on the turbo clock is 3.5 gigahertz, at least in my testing, that's the most, uh, or rather the highest clock speeds that I've seen. Has eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM that's running at 1600 megahertz. We have the GTX 960. This is the two gigabyte version of that card. So that's one of the biggest limitations already with this system is the two gigabyte VRAM buffer. It is what it is, it's the card that I had right on hand that could actually fit into the system so I can't really do much else with that it is featuring at least for the moment the built-in power supply that ships with this HP it has a maximum wattage rating of 320 watts on this power supply and under full load on both the GPU and CPU this system was pulling about 240 watts so theoretically I have plenty of wattage headroom with the power supply my real concern with this supply though long-term usage is that it's featuring a SATA to six pin PCIe adapter um, so far that's been working out just fine however in the long run I would love to get this power supply swapped out with something else though that's a little bit more difficult because this motherboard features one of these sort of proprietary uh, power plugs that comes from the power supply into the motherboard it's like a four pin motherboard plug instead of the typical 24 pin ATX plug though you can find adapters for these types of plugs out there I've never actually bought one, so I don't really know how well they work, if they work universally sort of across the board with these types of computers or if it's model specific. All those are things that I gotta look into later on if I wanna replace the power supply. But out right now, as it sits, this PC is extremely cheap. In fact, to give you just a little bit of reference, the base computer, which was originally featuring, I believe it was a 3470, that's an i5, that I swapped out with this Xeon that I just had laying around. So it's impossible for me to put a really good value on the Xeon itself, but the base system with the eight gigabytes of RAM cost me $90, actually just shy of $90. And the GTX 960, I got on a pretty good deal for just under $60. So the base system cost me about $150 if you really want to factor in about $65 or $70 for that CPU upgrade, the uh, the Xeon that's in there, we'll say $70. Worst case scenario, we're looking at $220. Now this thing did originally come with a hard drive, but right now I'm just rolling with my SSD that's off my test bench just for testing purposes. If I was gonna resell this thing though, I would go ahead and add a 120 gigabyte SSD as a boot drive as well. So again, we're Worst case scenario here, this thing cost me about $240. And as we'll see here in a moment, this computer is gonna get me great performance in esports titles like your Overwatches, your Apex Legends, your Fortnites, PUBG even. Uh, League of Legends is gonna run at like 3,000 FPS. That's a joke, obviously. It's gonna run at a couple few hundred FPS if I actually tested it, which I'm not, because that game can run on literally a potato with a fork sticking out of it. Okay, not literally. 
So regardless, that's the basic setup of this system. Other than that, it's just running Windows 10 Pro, you know, a fresh install and all that. I cleaned everything up, added some thermal paste onto the heat sink, which is not very large in this particular system. Though, as you see here in the thermal testing that I did when I put the GPU and CPU under full load, the CPU did get toasty, but it was within what I would consider to be normal use case circumstances. When you're gaming, your components are going to get fairly warm. Now, the GPU did seem to thermal throttle just a little bit, though it seemed to equalize at about 85 degrees Celsius at barely under what its rated clock speed is. So because of this testing, I'm not really all that concerned in a gaming workload that this computer is going to thermal throttle any at all. I know on the CPU side, obviously, it's not going to whatsoever, but even on the GPU side, I'm not expecting to see a whole lot of throttling anyways because this was all under a synthetic load. This is worst case scenario, and it was barely capping out the GPU and forcing it to throttle just a tiny bit. So I'm not really worried whatsoever with that. So with all that said, thermals out of the way, some of the limitations out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at some Overwatch gameplay and see just how well this system does. So we are now in Overwatch. Let's go ahead and hop into a game and see just how well this thing performs. So right now we're running at around 100 FPS on the high graphical preset, but of course this is just sort of dinking around here in the uh, sort of lobby area. We'll see what this actually translates to once we get into a little bit more of a fight here. Yeah, buddy. So what I like to see here is that the GPU is actually still my bottleneck. The processor is not in any way slowing this game down. I am purely right now at least, or not purely maybe, but for the most part, it's the GPU that's slowing me down. If anything's slowing me down at all, with it running right up there at 98-99% usage, whereas the CPU is sticking in there around 60-70% to 70 usage, though I have been happy to see that the uh, the frame rate here has stayed really solid at really for the most part over 100 FPS. W! There we go. So you see up there on the right, it was briefly sort of available to see, but we averaged over 100 FPS, just barely over 100 FPS, with this title running at full 1080p on the high preset. I'll be interested to pop in and check out what the 1%, 0.1% lows, all that was, but I'll go ahead and throw those up on the screen, really the full statistics, so you can kind of see what this game performed out, but I was very happy as the end user here with the performance of the game. Now to be clear here, Overwatch is a fairly easy game to actually run and play at high frame rates, but understand that Apex Legends, Fortnite, even games like PUBG, those are all gonna run at pretty good FPS. You're gonna be able to get all of those to 60 FPS at 1080p. Obviously, you may have to fiddle with settings a little bit depending on which game. Maybe some of them will do it on high, some of them will do it on medium settings overall, but you're gonna be able to hit that 60 FPS mark, no problem with this particular setup at 1080p. So hopefully you like this sort of sleeper-ish PC build. Obviously it gives you great performance, though it doesn't look all that great, admittedly. But if you do like it, go ahead and comment down below and let me know what you might change about this system. Would you put in a different CPU, maybe more RAM? Uh, my storage is just an SSD in here just to get the job done for the time being. But uh, if you would have a specific storage configuration even, let me know all those thoughts on the build down below in those comments. If you like the video, give it a like share, subscribe, all those things help out the channel a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Or if you have one of those newer AV...